Hello, I'm Toby Dietrich from Portland Community College in Portland, Oregon. And thank you very much for reading my article called More Trouble on This Loop the Loop in the Physics Teacher Journal. We're here today to experimentally investigate the behavior of these spheres as they execute the loop the loop. One sphere is two, cent two centimeters in diameter, the other sphere much larger, four centimeters in diameter. We've already done the theory in your classroom for an object sliding down the track with no friction. And the theory predicts that the object must be placed at a height 2.5 times the radius of the loop above the bottom of the track in order for it to successfully execute the loop without losing contact with the track itself. Then, more recently, you have investigated the, this behavior when there is rolling present when the sphere is actually rolling down the track with rotation and rotational energy. This requires an additional height to be released with the new theory, and that height is 2.7 times the radius of the track above the bottom of the track in order for the sphere to successfully negotiate the loop without losing contact. So let's take a look at the behavior of this larger ball as it goes around the track and hopefully makes, makes it around the track. It successfully did make it around the track. So let's look at that one more time in slow motion in order to see this very clearly that the ball does not lose uh, contact with the track as it executes the loop. Clearly, the ball made it around the loop. Now, the theory does predict, please note, that the behavior of these two spheres should be identical. The theory predicts that the height above the track is the same irregardless of mass and irregardless of radius. So theoretically, this smaller ball should also make it around the track when I release it right at this same location. But as you can see, it failed miserably. Let's take a look at that one more time in slow motion so that you can see, yes, it did not make it around the track. This is a problem, because in physics we all accept the fact that experiment must match theory. And if there is a mismatch, either the experiment is faulty or the theory is inadequate. I think after seeing this, we will have to accept the fact that the experiment is valid, so we must look at the theory and, ex and maybe modify and improve the model upon which the theory is based.